at uh, this time uh, is our opportunity for public input. There are some folks who are signed up to speak tonight. So I will preface, before we get to that, I just want to remind folks that uh, the board values this input from the community members and provides this time as one avenue to hear from people. Anyone who wishes to speak, we would ask that you would fill out this bold card. And also, you may speak for three minutes unless you are representing a group and then you may have up to five minutes. We do not have a timer projected tonight. We will. I'm sorry. We will turn it on. So there will be a timer that is projected on the screen so you can keep track of your time. All individuals who comment during this public input period are reminded that the information provided is intended to provide information to the board so we can fulfill its role. In that vein, all parties are asked that the information offered be accurate. The board respectfully requests that speakers refrain from presenting comments that introduce complaints or concerns that are directed toward or identified individual staff members or individual students. As such, personnel related and student related matters implicate a variety of rights that require careful attention the district has established a variety of alternative procedures for appropriately addressing such complaints. Any person with such a complaint or concern may contact the Office of the Superintendent for information on the most appropriate means of raising or pursuing his or her complaint. False statements or stigmatizing charges may subject the individual making such statements to legal repercussions, including but not limited to defamation claims. Conduct that is disorderly or any speech that is obscene, threatening, harassing, or defamatory is not permitted. Wisconsin Open Meetings Law allows only brief discussion of topics that are not listed on the agenda. Therefore, any, therefore we may not be able to fully address your comments tonight. But again, thank you for um, participating and offering your comments to us. So with that, we have several people signed up. First is Ed Perkins. I think I can probably speak from here. Here, did you want me to use a mic? All right. All right. I have basically two questions, and they do we'll go back to the truancy issue. I'd like to know in the truancy report that I was at a month ago, roughly in the December meeting. At that report, I cannot recall nor do have it read, uh, nor, and also you had a committee meeting on this, I think recently on the same issue, uh, whether any changes were being suggested with regard to Bar BARZAC, who provides, I think, the social services, which um, basically flow following Judge McGibbons' role in this matter. So that would be one question whether um, that report or any discussion has brought forth any statements or issues with regard to our Barzak's uh, services. Second question, uh, when will the board take further public input on the truancy issue? I mean, we're here tonight, um, but I'm curious in terms of the process going forward, since I expect this to be a little bit of a longer term issue and process um, when the public's input will be uh, allowed for it, and only if that's going to be done at board meetings or at other other meetings. Those are the two questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Again, uh, on the meeting tonight, there will be a report from the committee where we um, the update and the timeline was shared from the minister. So that'll be forthcoming in the meeting tonight. Perhaps that'll answer some of the questions. And on the Bar Barzak issue, anything that you said there? Uh, not at this point, but thank you. Uh, next up is Chris Sauter.
In the past few months, we've heard much about what allegedly is not working in a system designed to reduce truancy. But perhaps not enough has been stated about what is working and the amount of personal time and energy expended by staff in the Amtonary School District to meet the ever-increasing student needs, including the complicated concerns such as attendance. Attendance issues often surface long before a student reaches the teenage years. Educators at all levels, early childhood, elementary, middle and high school work diligently to address absenteeism and the underlying issues. In addition to completing their ever-increasing work responsibilities, staff members from all employee groups, including office staff, building engineers, maintenance personnel, food service par personnel, paraprofessionals, student services staff, specialists, educators, and administrators all influence the lives of students, and they serve as educators in the ASD system. They work tirelessly to make connections, meaningfully engage students of differing ability levels in lessons and activities, and provide for their physical, social, and emotional needs. They instill a love for lifelong learning, inspire a sense of value and self-esteem, provide a safe environment for positive social interactions, and in a challenging world, they carve out time for laughter within the school environment. Staff members regularly use their preparation periods, their lunch, as well as before and after school hours to develop relationships while working individually and providing instruction to students who are absent from schools. They do so in an effort to remediate, maintain, and increase skills, as well as to minimize student frustration. Educators repeatedly facilitate, plan, and monitor student, parent, and family meetings to focus on causes of absenteeism and determine, and determine viable solutions. And then they roll up their sleeves to do whatever it takes to secure appropriate supports within the school and the greater community. They communicate and collaborate with school personnel, health professionals, and community agencies to attempt to meet complicated student needs. Staff generously give up their personal resources and time, evenings and weekends, to complete these time-consuming activities. These efforts often are unacknowledged and occur at the expense of their own family commitments and personal health. Often, Staff members willingly expend energy and effort year after year with the same students and families, knowing that solutions are challenging, resources are scarce, and ultimately, families have the, op the option to accept or reject any assistance offered. While we believe that many educators with whom we have had the privilege of to learn seem to possess superpowers, the staff members who are continuously asked to do more are human. They care deeply, they work diligently, and are personally affected by the trauma experienced by their students, as well as the many demands placed on schools today beyond simply delivering the curriculum. As the truancy procedures are further developed and the school district assumes additional responsibility for remediating attendance issues, we urge you to be mindful and reflect the district commitment to staff wellness, respect, and dignity by carefully considering the impact on the staff while acknowledging the already overwhelming workload. Please meaningfully engage affected stakeholders in the planning and provide the necessary supports, resources, and time for staff to adequately address the provisions of the new truancy plan in addition to their many other professional responsibilities. Thank you for your time and for your consideration. Thank you. The next person who has signed up is Ron Wesley. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody in the room. We have a great school district here in Appleton. My kids went to Foster, James Madison, and East. I subbed in the district for a long time, on and off, particularly in music, and I'm very proud to have the Appleton School District. And the teachers since Act 10 have gone so far beyond the line of duty. I protested a lot. <laughs> anyway, so thank you to everybody. I also want to say that Judy 
Holly, Kim, and Donna in the office have been extremely cordial, respectful, helpful to me every time I call them, and it's two or three times a week. They're always available. They always get back to me. And as far as the board goes, you guys have quite a job all the time, and right now you've risen to the occasion and putting the task force together. I know with all the different groups that are going to be on it that it will do what we need to do here, which is provide safety, help, respect, and support services for the struggling families and the teachers. How many of you are teachers? I thought so. <laughs> that we know that it's not just one child that is truant according to the state law. It's a whole family. It's a ripple effect. I'm a retired guidance counselor, and I did my time at Oshkosh Correctional for 15 years. I taught in the HSAD program down there. So uh, plus being a guidance counselor in the public school. So thank you to everybody. We can all agree that we all want the kids, like I said, to be safe and treated with respect and that the family system is worked with. And I know that that is going on right now and will continue to. Uh, I used to work with runaways here in Appleton through the old youth services before it became the Boys and Girls Club. I've worked with the police, I've worked with the sheriff's department, I've worked with crisis, I've been around the block on this. And of course, most of my folks at the prison were from the southeastern part of the state. And the families we have here have problems, but a lot of the guys I had had even more problems. And so this is old news. And I just want to say now, I am applying to be one of the citizens on that committee. I'm glad you've got two positions. I'm sure you've got some very qualified people applying. I intend to listen and bring my extensive background to the table when appropriate, but I emphasize listen because I've been talking a lot and I've been bugging people a lot and I see some smiles over here. And I intend to listen and wait and see as we work toward a consensus to create a program that will be in process so that the recommendations for what your needs are continue to expand with the program. Uh, my, my personal suggestions right now are first of all that we have some kind of assessment form when a child is struggling and it's the truancy law which I think needs to be revised. I personally think that the truancy law needs to say no child who is strictly fluent and does not have troubles with legal issues is ever put in overnight detention and that we never again put a child, you ever again put a child on the electronic monitoring base. If that was for the sex offenders, I worked with the prison and with the drunk drivers usually. Uh, so an assessment for the family. Then I hope that they have a thorough list of resources in the district that is shared universally and updated constantly. I would like to see an expansion and have one person follow this family all the way through the system and gather. the rest of your information, you can do We do it through them. Okay, okay, and gather statistics now to see what's going on. Thank you. And next up. John Krieger. My name is John Krieger. Um, I actually only have one item I'd like to address to the board tonight. Uh, I think we all can agree that things uh, were done that were wrong in truancy. The example is, uh, the examples are students being sent to uh, shelter care and having to wear the electronic monitoring devices, losing their work permits, etc. I believe that a good gesture on the part of the board would be to not only acknowledge these errors, as Judy did in the last meeting, but to make restitution for them. I believe that uh, if it is wrong that we sent students to a detention facility like shelter care, it is also wrong that the family was charged for that detention. If it was wrong to put them on electronic monitoring devices, then it is wrong to charge them for those devices. And many of these families, as we know, are families that are marginalized and have low income. The, not all of them, but many of them. And paying those fees and costs is a, a, a difficulty for them. So I believe that those who did pay the cost should be reimbursed by the school district, and those who have not paid the cost should have those fines either paid by the school district or, or somehow wiped out. 
because when you have an unpaid fine that's been levied against you by the court, you will have an arrest or a bench warrant issue. And the next time that you get pulled over for a broken tail light or what have you, they will scan for outstanding warrants, find that, have you step out of the car or whatever you're doing, put you in handcuffs and take you away. And so we can't have this. If we acknowledge that these things were done and, and were wrong, then we have to make restitution and we have to make a claim. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this the one item of information uh, concerned address uh, concerned truancy in the AESD. Judy Baseman and Polly Van Bogart shared the importance of regular school attendance and the impact of missing school. Background information on truancy court and why school-based truancy court was established was also shared. However, following recent concerns raised during the truancy court, uh, specifically whether students and families were provided due process and being treated with dignity and respect within the setting, court setting, an outside review was initiated by the district. An independent attorney was retained and his findings were shared with the Board of Education meeting on December 20, 2018. Results of the review were shared, shared in open session, and following the meeting, the report was posted on the district's website. In response to the independent review and findings, the district has developed an action plan. An advisory truancy task force comprised of 20 to 25 members will be created to help students and families achieve regular attendance and address truancy concerns using evidence-based best practices. The advisory truancy task force will include AASD staff and administrators, community members, a mental health provider slash screener, students, parents, families, current students, and representatives from the Appleton and Branch Police Departments, the City of Appleton and Allegheny County, Legal Action of Wisconsin, and the Boys and Girls Club. The purpose of the advisory task force is to collaborate with community members and partners to support students and families in achieving regular attendance in the school district and address truancy concerns using best practices. We uh, review the independent report summary, its recommendations, and re uh, relevant data. The background knowledge of attendance laws. Um, that review the updated, revised AESD truancy process and procedures related to due process rights, clarify the three areas of review, evaluation, and how this is accomplished, pro 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 propose additional tiering interventions to prevent truancy, and finally, propose collaborative approaches to address habitual truancy. In addition to establishing the advisory truancy task force, the following will also occur. A review of the district's process and procedures will be conducted to ensure that internal procedures follow due process guidelines. The ASD student records policy will be reviewed and updated if necessary. Specific training around student records will be conducted for all administrators, student services staff, and administrative assistants and secretaries. Annual training will be provided. Finally, current staffing will be reviewed to determine ways to designate attendance, attendance or truancy advocate positions to focus on attendance and truancy. Attendance teams will be in place in all schools. It was noted that there are many effective prevention measures already in place to support regular school attendance and reduce truancy. It was also noted that there is a positive relationship between school attendance and school success. And school attendance is a responsibility shared by students, parents, schools, and the community. The school district leadership and all the work with students and families to achieve regular school attendance also want to ensure the dignity and respect of all students. Thank you, Diane. <clears throat> Any questions for Diane? I have a question about the but I don't know if I should go Maybe we should go to the 
disregarding the report. Uh, future board meetings are listed below, and I want to speak to the church for approval. Thank you. Robert Abshire, notable student in staff activities and accomplishments, flows right into that. Robert Abshire has been my go-to for the past eight years for every single one of my kids, two of which have graduated from Appleton North. One that's at Nover, actually, she just pulled out and she's heading to the United States Army on Martin Luther King's birthday on the 21st, so she'll be leaving that afternoon. But I mentioned Robert Ashire because he tied it into the truancy court and that he has been working tirelessly throughout the time that I've been in contact with them with my first kid, meeting them after school. And here recently, I thought it was just me, but throughout this whole truancy court highlight, he was one of several educators who work diligently with what I would call traumatized kids or kids who have other issues other than bluntly skipping school, which to me reflects a majority of our in the classroom teachers. So I'm in total appreciation for what our educators in the classroom do. Robert Abshire, his name has come up at the Boys and Girls Club on several occasions, in the library on several occasions, meeting kids after hours, speaking specifically to the above and beyond the call of duty that our teachers do, that I totally respect and appreciate. And I can hands down, as I look through all of my teachers, with every single one of my children throughout the experiences that my kids have personally had, have been outstanding. So I want to highlight Robert Abshire because, again, I thought he was going to be falling right to address the Trinity Court because he's dealt with those <coughs> kids who couldn't get to school. He met them at places outside of the school that were neutral locations to be able to give them the extra instructions that they needed. So I appreciate Robert Asher. I really believe it is important to highlight that. And in the same vein, to be able to make complete clarity on this whole truancy court issue, not one time have it been a concern that has been brought to me overall, and I can publicly say it, over the 75 families and individuals that I've personally talked to, specifically with teachers in the classroom, they have worked tirelessly. And I have a request for confidentiality from over 25 of them who have sent me letters saying thank you because I have not and was not being heard and I don't want to appear to contradict administrative leadership on this truancy issue because they have advocated, even in the classroom, or rather even in this courtroom, for their teachers, for their students, asking for leniency from the system. So for complete clarity and for public notice, I won't go through everything that I had here, but I want to be clear. There has never been, nor ever will be, any concern with what our teachers in the classroom are doing or have done to support children. They support them. They have done more than enough. And I am in agreement with the letter almost in tears that the perception would be that I or anyone on this board would think, but specifically me personally, because I know I've been the one raising the concern 
I have 16,000 kids in the school district. And I fight for the Caucasian kid just like I would fight for my daughter who's in the school right now. And the reaction that you got was me fighting for one of my kids who actually stood up and several of my kids who I spoke up to that abuse that they felt, the neglect that they felt from a courtroom, from someone who is in a position of leadership and authority. So please, educators who all came here, ensure that the world gets back. That I will be free. Supports, appreciates, and I can confidently tell you, having worked with my board members and my administrative leadership on this issue, although it's been an ugly fight, that every one of us have the best interests of the children at heart. I just bring a different perspective and I will continue to be verbal and speak out loud. Part, in part, is because I was blown up three times for my freedom of speech and I will continue to speak and continue to talk for every child every day. I want to make that clear. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>